Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager of the Gyme Diffraction Facility, which is a user facility housed in the Joint Institute for Advanced Materials at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Individuals from UT, outside universities, national labs, and industry are all welcome to use our facilities. In this video, I will show you some options for what you can do if your database in Highscore Plus does not have atomic position information. This video assumes that you have some experience with Highscore Plus or have watched one of my other longer tutorial videos such as phase quantification. I move kind of quickly through some of these steps, so if you have trouble keeping up with what I am doing here, I would recommend that you watch the phase quantification video first and then come back to this one. Now what we see here is a diffraction pattern for a silicon standard from NIST. Let's begin by right-clicking search match, we will edit the restriction set, and because I know that this sample is silicon, I will choose that, add rest to none of, close, search, and OK. I see a pattern here, I can left click and drag it up, I see that it matches the data nicely, now if I wanted to refine this phase, I would right click, convert pattern to phase. Now one detail to take note of is that there is no sort of percentage located here. And if we came over here and tried to click this button in order to refine the data, we see that we can't. And that is because this reference file does not contain atomic coordinate information. If we double click and scroll down, Below the peak list is where you would normally find the atomic coordinates, but we don't see that here, and that is why we can't refine this reference file. If we close and go to refinement control, look deeper into silicon, we see atomic coordinates here, but there is nothing inside. Now, if you want to solve this problem, there are three different options. The simplest option is to go back to your pattern list, and if you have any other candidate patterns down here, you can choose one of those that does have atomic coordinate information in it. Now, I don't have any other files on this computer because this computer does not have a database installed on it. The computers in the lab do, but this one doesn't. Yours might have many, many options for, say, silicon or whatever your phase is. Now, instead of clicking through each one in order to find one that does have atomic coordinate information, you could instead come over here, right-click, search match, edit the restriction set again, but this time go to the Quality tab. Now, if you click this button, it will skip patterns without structure data. What this means is that when you perform your search, the only candidate files that you will see have atomic coordinate information in them. It will ignore all of the ones that don't. So then you would just close, search, and then say OK. I won't do that because I don't have the database installed right now, but that is what you would do. Now maybe a reference file does exist for your phase that has atomic coordinates in it, but maybe your database is too old to contain that reference file. Alternatively, you could have a database that simply does not provide atomic coordinates for the phases contained within it. If either one of these is true, then you can try to find a CIF file .cif from another source, download it, and then import it into Highscore Plus so that you can refine from that CIF file. The other option is that you can manually input atomic coordinate information into Highscore Plus. So let's start by searching the internet for a CIF file. If you go to crystallography.net slash cod, it takes you to the Crystallography Open Database. Now, this is a free database, and I can't speak to the quality of the CIF files that you'll get from it. I'm not saying that they are bad, I'm not saying they are good. 
The few SIF files I've looked at were all good, but I don't have enough experience with this database to say anything else on the quality. And that's because I do typically use the PDF4 Plus database. You will need to judge the quality of each SIF file that you choose on your own. With that disclaimer made, let's begin a search. We see a number of fields here that we can use in order to search for our SIF file. I will just use the chemical formula, choose silicon, and then send. And here we see a whole list of SIF files that we can choose from. The first column we see is the crystallography open database ID number. Here we have links. If you click SIF, that will download the SIF file. Paper will open a new web page that has more information about where the SIF file comes from. Here we have the formula, space group, cell parameters, cell volume, and then a little bit of information about where the SIF file comes from. If you were to click this paper link, it will give you more information than what is contained here. You can use this information to look up the paper and determine if the information contained within the SIF file is reliable. Now I know my lattice parameter for my phase is about equal to this and it has this base group. So I will go ahead and just choose this SIF file. We see it download. I will then go back to Highscore Plus and go to File, Insert. Here we see the SIF file that we just downloaded. I will double click, go to refinement control, and now we see the phase here, and we see it here. And we also see a percentage here because we actually have atomic coordinates, which we can see here and here. Now this name is terrible. If we want to change it, we would just left click on this go to your title and type in whatever it is that you want and then we see the title change here and here. Now we would be ready to refine this phase. We would first want to delete this phase because it doesn't have atomic coordinates in it and that will give us problems. We can see that if we try to perform a refinement you'll get a warning that no valid atoms are present for this phase. So if you wanted to refine this one, we would just delete this and then go ahead and do whatever refinement parameter set you want to use. But let's now look at the other option for solving this problem. Maybe you can't find a SIF file from somewhere that has the atomic coordinate information in it. Let's delete this file, or this phase, because we are done with it. And let's look back at the silicon phase that does not have atomic coordinates. So left click here, and we want to right click here and add new atom. Now we see a row up here that we can start entering information into. Here we have what element we are choosing. So for this example, it is silicon. Next we have oxidation. For this example, it's zero. Here is the name that should automatically fill in when you choose your element. Scroll over here. Wyckoff, that is something that you would get from, a, say, a journal article. I know for this example, it is 8a. When I enter this, it should change the multiplicity and then the x, y, and z atomic coordinates to match whatever 8a corresponds to. Scroll over. Here we have SOF, and this is the site occupancy factor, and it indicates what fraction of a site is occupied by a specific atom. If the value is 1, it means that each atomic coordinate shown here is occupied by the atom we specified for this row which is silicon for this example. Next, we have B iso, which is the isotropic atomic displacement parameter, also known as the thermal parameter. This value will affect the intensity of your peaks, so it is good to have an accurate value if at all possible. 
Unfortunately, one value doesn't work for all elements as B is larger for light elements and smaller for heavy elements. Sometimes journal articles or SIF files will contain a number 4 B ISO, and if you believe that number, you can enter it here. I have seen different SIF files for the same phase have very different B ISO values though. While not ideal, you can try a default value if you just can't find a more reliable value to use. I know in GSAS, which is another refinement software, it uses U values instead of B values, and a U value of 0.02 seems to work well for GSAS, and that translates into a B value of about 1.5 if I'm not mistaken. So you can try that. It seems that in a lot of SIF files I have looked into, if they aren't really sure what value they should be using for B, they tend to use 0.5 as a default value, so you could try that as well. But once we have our information entered into this window here, we see it also here, and we now see a percentage here. And if you recall, before we were unable to click this button to refine it, but now we can. So that shows us that our problem is solved. That is pretty much it for this video. If you would like to know more about the Giant Diffraction Facility, please visit our website, which you should see the address to at the top right of the screen. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.